Good afternoon. My name is Jane and this is my Stephen Johnson syndrome or SJS story. I was diagnosed with idiopathic generalised epilepsy in 1982 when I was 11 years old. My seizures were well controlled on Epilim. In April 1991, when I was 19 years old, still living at home with my parents and younger brother, I attended a routine appointment about my epilepsy. My consultant made the decision to change my medication to Tegretol as I had reached childbearing age. So the process began of slowly decreasing my epilim and introducing Tegretol. Less than two weeks into this process, I developed a cough and a slight fever. Just a cold, I thought. Five days later, I had developed a very itchy rash and small red spots, which resembled heat rash all over my legs and body. I went to my GP and through a process of elimination, it was diagnosed as a reaction to a new soap powder that had been used at home. I was still feeling under the weather, so I went home and took myself off to bed. My parents went out for a few hours, so it was just me at home. I remember waking up and feeling really hot and I was hallucinating. When my parents returned, they took one look at me and rang the doctor, who advised calling an ambulance. They decided that it would be quicker to go by car, so I was taken to the Royal Liverpool Hospital Emergency Department by my parents. When I reached a and I had a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. I was given Pyroton and Paracetamol and the dermatologist was contacted. My mum had taken my medication to hospital and explained the changeover process with my epilepsy medication. A decision was made to discontinue the Tegretol and I was kept in for observation. Quite rapidly the rash was changing, blisters were forming all over my body, my mouth was sore and my jaw ached. My temperature remained very high. It was at this point that Stephen Johnson syndrome or SJS was diagnosed. Over the next few days, my condition deteriorated rapidly. The rash became deeper in colour. Some of the blisters had burst, but some got larger. I developed ulcers on my mouth and it was extremely painful. I started to lose my hair and my fingernails. A doctor from St Paul's Eye Hospital in Liverpool was called in to see if my eyes had been affected, but luckily they hadn't. It was at that point that an intravenous line was inserted just under my collarbone. As I had now lost 65% of my skin, a diagnosis of toxic epidermal necrolysis, or TEN, was made. I was moved to the acute renal unit and placed on a clinitron sand bed, a bed typically used for Burns patients to help reduce pressure on wounds. Over five consecutive days, I received blood plasma exchanges. Due to the expertise of the doctors and nursing staff looking after me, I made a slow and steady recovery. After three weeks of constant care and attention, I was finally discharged and continued my recovery at home. My life got back to normal quite quickly, but I did develop severe adult acne on my face a short time later. A strong course of medication cleared it up. I have some physical scars on my skin that affected parts of my body. But the main scars for me are psychological, along with the constant worry that SJS10 may happen again. Survivors of SJS10 often suffer with long-term visible physical complications, but it is important to also be aware of the psychological effects with some patients experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder. It's only as I get older that I realise how extremely lucky I am to have survived. Due to medical and nursing expertise and the research being conducted at the time, my SJS was diagnosed quickly and the medication stopped. This undoubtedly saved my life. Approximately 12 years ago, I was invited to be involved in the Patient and Public Involvement Group based at the Wolfson Centre for Personalised Medicine at the University of Liverpool to help influence and shape the research. As Professor Per Mohammed was part of the team that looked after me when I was diagnosed with SJS10, I thought this was a wonderful opportunity to get involved and give something back to support the pharmacogenetic research being conducted at the centre and others living with the condition. 
I happily accepted the invitation to be involved. As part of the group, I have been invited to attend the Wolfson Centre staff training and team building days, receive training on the yellow card scheme to make medicines and medical devices safer. And this has made me realise the importance of reporting an adverse drug reaction, no matter how big or how small. I've met amazing people from the SJS Awareness UK charity, who are part of our drug safety patient and public involvement group. To get the opportunity to be in a room and to listen to everyone's experiences is truly humbling. I think involving patient voices and those with lived experience of health conditions in the research process is integral in ensuring the research benefits those who are impacted most. As a group, we have produced a poster to support healthcare professionals to recognise SJS10 and get the message out there about reactions to medicines. We also produced My SJS Passport, a booklet that holds important information about the condition and the long-term effects experienced by patients. For example, common symptoms of the condition and medications used for its management. This is important once we have been discharged from hospital and have to attend many appointments, often with different healthcare professionals who have never heard of the condition. It really will help us get the best out of the appointments as it is often difficult to remember all the most important information that doctors ask for at each appointment. This guide essentially becomes the voice of the patient. They can take it with them anywhere, even travelling abroad. And it gives them peace of mind in case of emergency. As well as raising awareness and helping explain the condition, and its management to clinicians and healthcare professionals, it's also useful to help friends and family better understand my needs and support. Because of my involvement with the group, I am aware of the continued research and hard work that goes on to improve how patients are treated with medicines, which is invaluable to me and for the future. I now have an understanding as to why my reaction may have happened, something myself or my family never really understood all those years ago. I also understand that having a certain gene can affect how a person responds to a medicine. I feel incredibly lucky to have been given this opportunity. Recently, I was asked by the Royal College of Physicians and the Royal College of GPs about my feelings regarding pharmacogenetic testing and what it would mean to me as someone who has experienced a severe life-threatening reaction. For me, it would take away all my fears and the extreme anxiety that I still have regarding taking any new medication. In fact, I really take new medications due to this. Pharmacogenetic testing will be able to give the answers as to whether a medication is suitable for me or not and what dosage I need, taking away the risk of ever experiencing SJS10 or something similar again. Pharmacogenetic testing also makes me feel safer for future generations. I now have a 16-year-old son, and I often wonder if he will be okay if he ever has to take any medication in the future. This testing has the potential to eradicate all those fears. Pharmacogenetic testing can save time and money for the NHS, but importantly, in the case of a potential SJS diagnosis, it could save the person's life. I find it really exciting that this testing could be available to us all in the future. Giving medication the chance to work its best for the individual and treat us the way it should. Having the correct drug or dosage for our body can eliminate the chance of any side effects or severe reactions. I would just like to finish by saying how extremely important research is as well as having people with lived experience help shape it to make it relevant and impactful to those who need it most. I am continually grateful for everybody's hard work and dedication in minimising adverse drug reactions. Thank you.